former Chief of the General Staff, General Lord Dannett, joins me now. Um, and certainly this was the Commander-in-Chief of all armed uh, personnel uh, who swore an oath of allegiance to her. What will their loss be felt today? Well, um, the loss is very real and is very great. I think as we all woke up this morning, we had that sort of sinking realisation in our hearts that the day that we had dreaded that the Queen would die was yesterday. And today is the new day. It's the beginning of, of something else. And you're absolutely right. For members of the armed forces, the Royal Navy, the British Army, the Royal Air Force, uh, it's particularly special. It's also very personal because on the day that we join one of the three armed forces, we swear an oath of allegiance, uh, not to the government, um, not to the Minister of State for Defence or anything like that, but actually to the sovereign. And 28th of August, 1969, when I held a Bible in my hand, I swore an oath of allegiance to the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II. But that allegiance, as she breathed her last breath, passed seamlessly to the new king, to King Charles III. And that's who our allegiance is with now. And, you know, it's an incredible aspect, part of the unwritten British constitution, that those of us who choose to serve the nation in uniform, we serve the nation, we serve the person of the sovereign. And that's a very special aspect. And um, that allegiance has now passed uh, just in a flash of lightning, as it were, from Queen Elizabeth II to King Charles III. That's very, very special. And uh, this is now the start of something new just as we look back with great fondness and all our memories of just how special that person of Queen Elizabeth II was. And of course, this is a family that's, that's steeped in military history itself, is it not? You know, Prince Philip committed to the Navy, a job that he had to give up to marry the Queen. Prince Andrew, we know, uh, served in the Falklands. Princes William and Harry too, Harry in Afghanistan. You know, it really was all around them, uh, the Queen's own children and grandchildren being part of this service. Well, that's absolutely right. Um, <clears throat> the Sovereign and the members of the royal family take their very close association with the Royal Navy, the British Army, and the Royal Air Force very, very seriously. And, and, it, and it's really important that they do, and they do it very willingly, and they do it extraordinarily well, because it's the embodiment of that personal link between every individual serviceman and servicewoman with the head of state, with the sovereign. And, and that link is, is so very, very special. So, as I said just a moment or two ago, um, this is a great loss for the nation, but actually it's a very personal loss for soldiers, sailors, airmen, airwomen and, and marines, um, because the, the sovereign uh, is our, our, our leader, is our commander in chief. Um, and that commander in chief role passed seamlessly yesterday from Queen Elizabeth II to King Charles III. It's very special. It's very personal. I think it's almost unique in the world. Um, other countries like the United States and France, the elected politician who is the head of state um, is their senior person. But in this country, there is something mystical, there's something magical, there's something spiritual, there's something very special about having the sovereign as the head of state and the head of our armed forces. Um, I think it's unique. It's very, certainly very, very special. Well, we hear you, certainly. Lord Richard Dannett, former chief of the general staff, thank you. Thank you.